15 times you should go around and not land. So in these situations, you want the ground to be getting farther away from you, not closer to you. Welcome back to J1 Aviation, everyone. And here are my top 15 reasons when it might be a good idea to abandon the approach. So in these situations, you blew it. You had your chance for a good approach and landing, but something caused it to completely fall apart and now it's time to go around. So at the end of this list, I'll tell you how many of these 15 have caused me to go around. So now a disclaimer, not all of these would necessarily trigger an immediate go around, right? Some of these can be corrected in a timely manner, um, but these things on the list, if they're not fixed, if they're not corrected, can cause a go around. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first one is kind of a catch all. And I would say anytime continuing the approach will compromise safety, that's a good time to go around. So yes, anytime safety will be compromised for any reason by you continuing the approach, that's a good reason to go around. The second one is more of a feeling. So let's say something pops into your mind. Hmm, I wonder if I should be going around in this case. Okay, if you're starting to have thoughts in your mind which are causing you to question the validity of your approach and the stability of what you're flying, it's time to go around. This basically means your mind is sensing that there's a large discrepancy between what you've been taught what you've known that ends in a good approach and landing and what your body is actually feeling at this moment. There's some big discrepancy here. So your body can sense things. It wants to keep you safe. So you might, it might be telling you that something isn't right, even if you can't really put your finger on it. And then it might be a good time to go around. Okay. So the third one, more straightforward, right? Someone tells you to go around. So it could be ATC. It could be, um, your CFI. It could be another pilot on the radio actually tells you to go around. So that's kind of rare. And I wouldn't just arbitrarily tell people to go around, but I've heard it on the radio. You know, one pilot says to another pilot who's landing, you know, Hey, you need to go around. Typically this is because there's some obstruction on the runway or about to be an obstruction on the runway. And maybe the landing pilot doesn't see it and they're not aware of it. Okay. So the next few deal with an unstabilized approach. Now, no approach is perfect, and we're always making corrections on our approaches and landings, but as a rule of thumb, you generally want to be stabilized by around 500 feet. So here we go. So the fourth one then is improper airspeed. So if you're less than 500 feet, you're way too fast, you're way too slow, time to go around. Fifth, improper altitude, similar to the previous one. If you are less than 500 feet, you're still way too high, you're way too low, it's time to just go around, set yourself up for a better approach next time. Your touchdown, your landing will be 100% better. You'll have a better approach. You'll have a better result at the end. The next one is, so this would be sixth, is vertical speed. Again, 500 feet or lower to the runway. You don't want excessive sink rate on final. So this would be caused by like a previous one, right? Like you're too high in the approach. So you try to fix it and you're diving towards the runway. Now your VSI is pegged in the negative numbers, right? And you're close to the ground, high negative vertical speed, right? You don't want this. You want a nice stabilized final approach. Seventh is airplane is not configured. So maybe you're on final and you realize something isn't done. So the likelihood here is that some checklist, maybe before landing checklist or something hasn't been completed. True, you could just flip the switch on, right? Maybe it's the landing light isn't on, something basic. But whatever, the point is here is that you clearly missed the checklist. Now, if you notice one thing, you know, is there something else, something bigger that got missed? Because you probably completely missed the checklist. So, you know, on final approach, a few hundred feet above the ground is not where you wanna be, you know, whipping out your checklist and trying to run through a thing while, while you're trying, you know, to keep the aircraft on short final. Okay, number eight is you lose sight of the runway. Now this could happen if you were on a longer base and final and maybe there's like some low scattered layer of clouds or maybe there's rain showers or snow showers, something that causes you to lose forward visibility. You can't see the runway anymore. So if you lose contact with the runway in this situation, it's a good idea to go around. Ninth is if you experience wind shear or weight turbulence. Now, not all the time does this mean go around. But if you get a large sudden change of wind speed, it could quickly turn a stabilized approach into an unstabilized one. 
And then that, of course, would necessitate to go around. So number 10 is if you are, an if you are experiencing an excessive crosswind that keeps you from tracking the runway center line. Now this is kind of obvious, right? If the crosswind is above your personal limits or capabilities or the aircraft's limitations, you know, not only do you need to think about going around, but you also need to think about finding another runway more favorable with the current wind conditions. And then the 11th is runway obstructions. So there are several reasons, you know, the runway could become obstructed, right? Maybe the previously landed aircraft isn't clearing the runway fast enough, or maybe another vehicle is I don't know, driving across the runway, trying to get to the other side of the airport, maybe wildlife wander onto the runway, right? Or maybe there's like a big flock of birds just passing through the landing area of the runway. So these would all be good reasons to go around. Now, number 12 would be conflicting traffic. Now, hopefully as you are working your way around the traffic pattern, you know, you don't have any conflicting traffic, but it's not unheard of to hear of an aircraft, you know, on base, or turning base and then someone calls like a two or three mile straight in final right so what do you do in this case right you both potentially will be meeting up in short final in like the same geographical area so that's kind of a scary situation to be in and you probably want to have another quick conversation on the radio with the other aircraft right assuming they're on the radio and you know one of you one or both needs to be thinking about doing some evasive maneuvers, going around, sidestepping, so you you know can minimize the collision hazard. 13 would be some mechanical issue. Now, I mean, typically you might be thinking, right, like mechanical issue, we need to get on the ground ASAP. And that could be true for some extreme situations, but there could be other situations which arrive arise in the pattern I'm not sure, maybe like a gear issue comes up or something. So rather than land right away, since you're already on like downwind or something, I don't know, you wanna give yourself more time to think about it, more time to think about how do I actually wanna do this approach? How do I wanna do this landing so I can set myself up for the best possible outcome? Or potentially, maybe I don't even wanna land here anymore. Maybe I wanna to go to a different airport with the bigger runways, better capacity, better able to handle this type of situation right so you know potentially if something mechanical happens that would be another opportunity to go around okay so 14 is if you had a hard bounce right so everyone bounces a landing once in a while but in some cases you know if you hit too firmly you could get a real nice bounce and find yourself gaining altitude quickly again so in this case it's best to go around and try again now obviously if the runway is like miles long and you have like a decent amount of experience maybe it makes sense to just recover and you know put it back on the ground but going around is is never really the wrong answer there 15 would be excessive floating so this is a bit similar to the previous one right um, you want to land on the first third of the runway so if you are floating significantly especially out of the first third of the runway it's time to go around so let's face it if you are significantly floating out of the first third of the runway you've probably already busted one of the previous 14 items <laughs> So, okay, so there's 15. So how many have, of those have caused me to do a go around? So I've gone around for safety issues. I've gone around for a bad feeling. I've gone around because I've been advised to. And then of course, I think during our, everybody's initial training, right? You have all the unstabilized ones, right? Uh, improper airspeed, improper altitude, improper vertical speed. Wind has caused go arounds. I've had birds on short final, which caused me to go around and then bounce and floating as much as you don't want to admit probably everybody has had those so that's 10 for me 10 of the 15 have caused me to go around at one point or another dating all the way back potentially others maybe i just can't remember so how about you how many have you had so thanks everyone for watching today we'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying j1 aviation